this great Cleveland Mets swap of last January that we all thought was the most unbalanced lopsided trade that we'd seen in a long time because <laughs> we're like wait a minute two middle infields you get you get Lindor and Carrasco's a throw in right but here we are today Cliff both teams are headed toward playoff spots both teams have been outstanding all four of those guys have been great who do you score the win to on that trade I think it's a push mm. I really do I think it's even I think you know when you look at the side of the of the Guardians, you're saying, well, you're not paying these cats a lot of money, so you, you you're getting max return, you know, for these guys going out there doing, you know, what you see on the screen right here. And let, let's forget about pressure. When, when, when you watching these when you watching these Guardians play, I think you're seeing these these guys in in their lane, understanding who they are, understanding what they need to do consistently, and they they they, they just go out there and play sort of fearless. They, they, they have no fear in how they go out there and play. But I think when the expectations are what they are, meaning that we're not asking you to hit homers, but if you do hit homers, that's icing on the cake. We're not asking you to do anything you're not capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Just go out there and play your game. Just go out there and do your thing. And I think we're seeing the reward for the Guardians as well. But on the flip, with, with, with the Mets, I mean, this is a real indoor. This is a real indoor you've been waiting to see. You give them a lot of money, but let's forget the money. The play is there. The guy that we saw last year wasn't him. He was trying to do something uncharacteristic of himself. And I think we saw that in all the stuff and all the antics he was sort of going out there doing. This is the real Francisco Lindo. You see him smiling, having a good time. You can say Buck played a big factor in that, whatever the case may be. But Carrasco, even though he's banged up a little bit, you seeing these guys produce, Alex, and, and I think it's a push. Yeah, well, I mean, last year, you know, both sides of this trade, you know, for the Mets and for the Indians, guys are struggling a little bit. And then this year, you know, we're seeing, you know, each one of these guys kind of play up to their potential a little bit, and Carrasco's been a difference maker in that yeah. rotation for them as well. But I think, like you were talking about earlier, the Indian or the uh, the Guardians, these are the types of trades they have to make because they can't play in the same payroll space as the Mets. So they got to find ways to acquire younger talent to be able to, you know, have the same type of production for less money, and that's what you know they've been able to do so well over the last few years. But I'm kind of with you there. Sometimes in trades like this, you got to. Trade something good to get something good back. And, you know, that's pretty much the case here. Yeah. Well, when you're talking about money, uh, Lindor, you know, 10 year deal for 341 million. <laughs> uh, and Jimenez and Rosario together this year are making a combined less than $6 million worth of salary. So, look, we all know that Lindor is a super duper star for sure. Yeah. But, boy, the Cleveland folks did really well.